A TikTok star named Gabrielle Salazar, who was only 19 years old, was smuggling illegal immigrants from Mexico in his car when cops tried to pull him over. He fled from the cops and sped away, only to crash his car. He and everyone in the vehicle died in a fiery crash. I guess this is why you shouldn't break the law. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Obvious, and today on the internet, we're going to be talking about some news stories. I'm also going to talk about Steve Bannon predicting Make America Great Again winning in 2022 and 2024, with Trump asking a US judge to force Twitter to restore his account. But we're going to talk about all that and more before we do. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for updates for more content, and if you like this content, please share the video. Now let's just jump right in, folks. But now, a quick word from our sponsor. Introducing Webull. Webull is an easy and convenient trading app where you can buy and sell cryptocurrency and stocks. Right now is a really good time to get into investing as stocks and crypto are currently down at a discount. Join Webull today and deposit $5 and you will receive two free stocks worth up to $1,400. Folks, it's basically free money. Click the affiliate link and deposit your first $5 to receive two free stocks. And we're back. Here on the Daily Mail, TikTok star Gabrielle Salazar, 19, was smuggling illegal immigrants from Mexico in his Chevrolet Camaro muscle car when cops tried to pull him over. All four men died in a fiery crash when he lost control of the vehicle. So TikTok star Gabriel Salazar, also known as Gabe Not Babe on social media, died on Sunday in Savala County, Texas, with three other men 50 miles from the Mexican border. He was driving three undocumented, yeah, honk honk, undocumented, um, you know, I, I just love it how they always say undocumented Mexican immigrants or undocumented migrants. There's no such thing as an undocumented person. What you mean to say is an illegal Mexican immigrant who's breaking the law. The names of the three men were Luis Jimenez Mora, Jose Molina Lara, and Sergio Espinoza Flores, who also died in the crash, according to Zavala County Sheriff's Office. This is a smuggling case. It's that simple. And this is the crazy part about this. This dude was a TikTok star guy. He was on the internet and he was smuggling people illegally. How many people do you think are smuggling illegal immigrants on a daily basis? And this is exactly what the Democrats are allowing to happen. In Joe Biden's administration, here it says, the influencer had more than 2 million followers on TikTok, where he shared videos of himself lip syncing and dancing, and more than 757,000 on Instagram. You know, I really have no idea why people like this become famous. <laughs> First of all, TikTok is owned by the Chinese, and I have a feeling that their algorithms promote people who specifically are a negative influence. This guy was clearly a negative influence enabling human trafficking. He was illegally smuggling people across the border, hurting America and hurting this country. Why is this popular? Who the hell cares about this guy in his, in his Zoomer haircut and his douchebag friend? I just, look, I don't get it. But apparently he was really, really big. I mean, 2 million followers, that's, that's incredible. And sure, it's sad that this man has passed away. It's sad that the people that were with him passed away. But um, if you weren't breaking the law in the first place, nothing bad would have happened. So here the story says, TikTok star Gabriel Salazar was driving three undocumented immigrants from Mexico during the night on his fatal high-speed police chase in Texas. All four occupants were killed after Salazar crashed into multiple trees along Highway 85 in La Praia, Texas about 50 miles from the Mexican border, and the car flipped over and caught fire. Here it says, the car rolled over several times before coming to a standstill on its roof and then caught fire. None of them were able to escape. Here's a picture of Salazar and his car. Looks like a very fancy car. I'm gonna go ahead and say this guy was a spoiled brat. And this is the problem with the youth today. Not to sound like a 30 year old boomer, but come on. I'm not 30 by the way, I'm younger than that. But still, I'm a millennial. And why would you risk your life? Oh my God, look at that photo. Burn to a crisp. But speaking of the border, Steve Bannon is predicting sweeping MAGA wins in 2022 and 2024 
according to this Newsweek article. He's urging for a quick government takeover. Here it says, Steve Bannon believes the far right pro Trump make America great again. Okay. Really? Really Newsweek? It says Steve Bannon believes the far right pro Trump make America great again MAGA movement will have sweeping victories in 2022 and then again in 2024 as he calls for a quick takeover of the federal government. Fake news. Okay, first of all, the MAGA movement is not far right. The MAGA movement make America great again is a conservative movement and includes a lot of liberal centrists and even some Bernie bros. Come on, man. You really calling Bernie bros who voted for Donald Trump and they did. Are you telling me that they are far right? This is how absolutely ridiculous politics have become in America. This is a total lie. Newsweek, you are a joke. Here it says, although Democrats may currently control the House of Representatives, the Senate and White House, Bannon predicts that's all going to change in the next couple of elections. So he's talking about the midterms. In the midterms, there's going to be a bunch of votes and we have the potential to flip the house. A lot of people suspect that because of Biden's disastrous policies and total failure over the economy, that people are going to vote for Republicans and totally take back the house. If Republicans can hold the Senate, well, that would mean that Biden is stripped of a lot of power because then it would be Biden and a Republican Senate and House effectively making Biden a lame duck president, which honestly is probably the best possible result. So here Bannon says, quote, we're going to have a sweeping victory in 2022. And that's just a preamble to a sweeping victory in 2024. In this time, we're going to be ready and have a MAGA perspective, MAGA policies, not the standard Republican policies Bannon told NBC News. In other words, if you're a Republican, if you want to vote against the Democrats, remember to vote for Republicans because unless you want more of Joe Biden, yeah, you better vote for a Republican. In other news, Trump is asking a US judge to force Twitter to restore his account, which honestly they should since he broke no rules. Here it says, former President Donald Trump has asked a federal judge in Florida to force Twitter to restore his account, which the company suspended in January following the deadly storming of the US Capitol. Mr. Trump's attorneys on Friday filed a motion in a U.S. district court in Miami seeking a preliminary injunction against Twitter and its CEO, Jack Dorsey. They argue that Twitter is censoring Mr. Trump in violation of his First Amendment rights, according to the motion. Twitter declined to comment Saturday on Mr. Trump's filing. I'm going to tell you what this is really about. The reason that Twitter banned Trump, it's not because he broke the rules, which he did not. They claim that he was glorifying violence due to the January 6th protest. However, this is a complete and utter lie. Trump literally said in a message that people should go home with peace in their hearts. No violence. In fact, he argued against violence. Yet if you ask the average lefty, the average liberal, they'll tell you, oh, Trump, Trump was glorifying the violence, all the violence, which is a complete and utter lie. I'll tell you why they banned Trump, because they do not want Republicans to win. All these social media platforms, you got big tech, you got YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, they're all left wing. And they always say, we're not biased. We believe in equality and both opinions. No, they don't. Left wingers can say whatever they want on Twitter, whatever they want on Facebook. They will never get banned. The Taliban has Twitter accounts that tells you everything you need to know. Jack Dorsey is literally platforming actual terrorists, but not Trump? Are you kidding me? Reinstate the man and do it right now. But let's uh, talk about the next story. Here on the Daily Mail, Joe Biden reveals he'll tour the country next week to sell his scaled back $2.3 trillion budget package after humiliating no vote and admits everyone is frustrated. Yeah. So it's a little bit too late for this, but he's going to do it anyway. Um, the $3.5 trillion infrastructure package basically failed when Nancy Pelosi said, we're not going to have a vote. I think it's because they know that the vote would fail. But this is just another epic failure in the long list of disasters that Joe Biden has done. I think the funniest part of this was Joe, Joe Manchin, a Democrat who was looking down at protesters from his 700,000 yacht saying, and I quote, we're gonna make the rich pay. 
<laughs> while holding out on Biden's $3.5 trillion bill. So Senator Joe Manchin was one of the one of the people who said that he did not want the spending bill. And in this hilarious clip, he said, we're going to make the rich pay from his $700,000 yacht. <sighs> rich elites who really don't give a damn about you. But that, my friends, is merely the obvious. Well, that's all for now, folks. What do you think about this story? Let me know by commenting down below. As always, support the channel by joining me on Patreon or Subscribestar, as this channel is currently not monetized. It is supported by viewers like you. If you want to donate, check out my DonorBox page or send me crypto. Links and addresses are down below. Thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time.